Hi everybody, my name is Bill Kennedy. Welcome to the Miami MongoDB Meetup. Uh, tonight we have a special guest all the way from MongoDB in New York, Valery Karpov. He's going to give us his time tonight to talk about the Wired Tiger storage engine while he battles the uh, really bad weather happening right now in New York City. So I'm going to switch it over to him right now. All right, cool. Thanks, Bill. Let me give me a second to share my screen. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Awesome. I guess I see myself looking at you, so that probably works. Let me know if at any point the uh, this fades out or anything like that. I've been uh, the weather here is a little bit weird. Or is awful, so the uh, the connection might drop out for a sec. But anyway, let's just let's get started. So what I'm going to be talking about today is, uh, is the Wired Tiger storage engine and the storage engine API in general, sort of what it's all about and, uh, and, why, we're, and why it's such an exciting part of MongoDB 3.0, enough that we decided to skip 2.8 entirely and go to 3.0. So quick little bit about me. Um, I do continuous integration and Node.js at MongoDB. I maintain the MongoDB ODM and Recently, I've been working on rewriting MongoDump, Mongo Restore, all the uh, all the tools that are shipped with MongoDB in Go, which Bill can tell you an awful lot about at his blog. Um, so, what we're go what I'm going to be talking about today? Uh, first of all, what is the Storage Engine API? What is Wired Tiger? Why you should why Wired Tiger is truly something special? Some of the basic internals of Wired Tiger, as well as some uh, some gotchas that you should probably avoid. I'll have a brief demo of uh, of, of upgrading a standalone MongoDB instance to Wired Tiger using MMS Automation, which is uh, MongoDB's new tool for managing uh, MongoDB operations of the cloud, and show some very sort of show one of the reasons why I'm very excited uh, about Wired Tiger. So, so what, uh, what is a storage engine? What is the whole storage engine API about? Well, a storage engine is sort of how MongoDB persists your data. Up until up to MongoDB 2.6, the, uh, the storage engine was, uh, was what we called MMAP v1. But back then, there was no notion of a storage engine at all. It was just the only way that MongoDB persisted data. Uh, MongoDB 3.0 introduces an a, a pluggable API that you can sort of stuff in new storage engines into. So MongoDB 3.0 comes shipped with a few different storage engine options. There's uh, there's the classic MMAP v1, which is essentially the same storage engine that you had in MongoDB 2.6 with some significant improvements. There's an in-memory storage engine, which doesn't persist memory to disk at all. There's Wired Tiger. There's actually a dev null storage engine, which is not documented, but uh, but now we know that dev null does in fact support sharding because there is a dev null storage engine, and even internally somebody at one of the MongoDB hackathons or internal hackathons put together a storage engine that used Twitter. So every time you inserted a document, it would shoot out a tweet on a certain account, and every time you know every time you would update a document, that tweet would get updated. You could delete tweets. So you can do a lot of very crazy things with uh, with the storage engine API, but for now we're for now for this talk just gonna be focused on uh, just gonna be focused on the Wired Tiger side of things. So why uh, why do we actually bother with having a storage engine API? Well, we want to have sort of different performance characteristics because there are certain things that MMAP v1 doesn't do very well. Um, a class sort of the classic work uh, web development workloads that you deal with. And that v1 handles pretty well, where you have a very high ratio of reads to writes. You're mostly just reading data back, and you're and you know you have a user that's occasionally like clicking save, and then hundreds of people reading that data. And that v1 is a pretty good fit for that use case. But uh, but when you have a use case that sort of has a much higher uh, a high volume of writes. Say an analytics workload where you have uh, where you basically want to track you know oh user click this particular button and stuff all of that into one collection and then do run analytic 
go queries on that data and might be one way to handle that terribly well. So what we would like to do with, uh, with the storage engine API is let you use sort of the same MongoDB API that you're used to with the aggregation framework with, uh, with, the, uh, with MongoDB's query syntax with, uh, with indices, everything that you're used to, but on top of a different storage layer so you can have sort of different performance characteristics. You can have, say, something that's optimized for handling high write throughput. And even uh, you can even mix storage engines in a replica set or sharded cluster. So one of the uh, one of the dreams is you have a uh, you have a replica set where the primary has a high write throughput storage engine, and then if you're not worried about consistency, you can read from the secondaries of the of the, the uh, replica. Maybe not great for writes. So uh, this is and replication of, of doing a, of having a storage API. So how would the storage engines look? Well, they uh, they basically store different data into uh, onto disk. So this is the uh, this is the DB path for the if you were to run MongoD with uh, with DB path is slash data slash DB and do an LS in Linux or Mac on that directory, you would get something that. Have, you have older, you have some names. Wired Tiger is stored format. Uh, um, yeah, again, I'm not entirely familiar with these storage engines and turtles, but the important thing is that Wired Tiger's data format is very different and entirely incompatible with, uh, with MMAT V1s. But so, what Wired Tiger is? Uh, it's an actually it was a separate company up until recently, uh, founded by the people who wrote Berkeley DB originally. Uh, MongoDB recently acquired the company, and these slides will be up on SlideShare later if you really want to click the link, or you can just Google MongoDB Wired Tiger if you want to read more about it. And again, it's one of the storage engine options available in MongoDB 3.0. So. Some of the things that make Wired Tiger awesome, or the Wired Tiger storage engine in particular awesome, that I'll be talking about uh, in a little bit, is first of all, document level locking. We have uh, Wired Tiger also has compression on disk enabled by default. You, have to, you can have consistency without using journaling, which can give you better write throughput, and of course, better performance on, uh, on certain workloads. So what do uh, what are all the what do all these points actually mean? So what uh, what first of all what is document level locking? Uh, up until up until about version 2.2, .2, we criticized global write lock, which in practice wasn't as bad as it sounds, but it meant that one block one write would block all other writes. Not very ideal. Uh, version 2.2 Dot two introduced the database level locking, where the uh, will only block other writes to the same database. Um, bit of an bit of an improvement, not as good as we would like. Uh, Three point zero actually has collection level locking with MMAP v one. Uh, that's one of the big improvements to the MMAP v one storage engine. Is it actually basically collect or? A write to a certain collection blocks writes to all other writes to that collection, but not. And however, 3.0 with Wired Tiger, because Wired Tiger has uh, doesn't have sort of some of the limitations that the MBAT v1 storage engine has, uh, only locks at the document layer. So only writes to or well writes to a certain document only block writes to that particular document. You can uh, you can write to or you can have write it's going to other documents, which basically lets you uh, lets you write more, write faster, and also more CPU because, well, in Wired Tiger world, or Wired Tiger was designed to uh, to take advantage of uh, hardware or get better hardware utilization. So, roughly speaking, with Wired Tiger, typically if you add more cores, you get more writes, whereas historically MongoDB has not. Really utilize CPU very well. Um, 
So, uh, so with the Wire Tiger storage engine, you also get compression on disk by default. This is another very commonly requested feature for MongoDB, where uh, disk space is reasonably cheap, but not that cheap that you don't really care about how much space your data takes up. So, by default, Wire Tiger or the Wire Tiger storage engine uh, uses a compression algorithm called Snappy, which is uh, which is a good gives you good compression. Without, without sort of utilizing too much CPU, because again, part of the advantage of document level locking is that you can utilize your CPU better. Um, so you don't want to use up too much CPU with compression. However, if you're more concerned with getting better compression, there's also one other supported uh, compression algorithm with the wired target storage engine, that's Zlib. Um, better compression, but at the cost of additional uh, additional overhead, basically more CPU utilization. And I'll show you later how to uh, how to enable Zlib compression with uh, with WireTiger. And one of the other features that I'm very excited about is uh, is that WireTiger storage engine allows you to maintain consistency with that with the journal off. So um, if you're not familiar with MongoDB's journaling semantics. Um, since MongoDB do, likes to do updates in place, it requires uh, it needs to have a sort of write-ahead log where it commits uh, where it commits sort of a description of the operation that's going to take place to disk, and then actually have the operation and then actually execute the operation. This is to ensure that oh, if when you're uh, if you're halfway through applying that update and is because power has gone out in your uh, in your in your data center. Um, do, do. So if power goes out in your data center. Your uh, that write may be halfway through. You may have your data in an inconsistent state. But since Wire Tiger, the storage engine doesn't actually do in place updates. Uh, Wire Tiger doesn't have this problem. So for potentially for insert heavy workloads, Wire Tiger could be very good because you don't have to sort of write two different things. And you don't have to wait for the, uh, for the sort of write-ahead log to commit to disk before actually writing. And you can rely on uh, replication or having a replica set for your durability, because, well, unlikely that all, all of the nodes in your replica set will crash at the same time. Uh, more about this in a little bit. But first, let me, uh, let me just show you sort of how you actually run WireTiger. Uh, the MongoDB process, the, uh, the MongoDB core server, now has a dash dash storage engine option. So you can run, uh, you can run MongoDB with the WireTiger storage engine by using MongoDB dash dash storage engine WireTiger, lowercase w, uppercase t, camel case. Uh, brief, a brief warning, as I mentioned before, uh, WireTiger and MMAP v1 use a very different on-disk format, so you can't run WireTiger if you have MMAP v1 files in your DB path. You will actually get an error that looks like this. Uh, basically, MongoDB will complain that it detected uh, it detects data files that have uh, stored that have the storage engine MMAP v1, and it wants to run with WireTiger. So, one way or the other, if you are uh, if you have if you have uh, MMAP v1 files in your DB path, can't run WireTiger or vice versa. So upgrading uh, upgrade to WireTiger. Um, again, you can't as I showed right here. You can't copy. You can't just copy the database files, and you can't just restart with the same DB path. But there are other method or but other standard methods for upgrading still work. For example, you can, if it's part of a replica set, you can shut down your MongoD, empty out the DB path, and restart it, wait for an initial sync. You can also use Mongo Dump and Mongo Restore. Um, the only distinction being that in 2.6 and earlier, Mongo Dump and Mongo Restore actually supported a dash dash DB path option. That, so they can only, if you use dash dash DB path with Mongo Dump and a uh, version less than 2.6 of Mongo Dump, you uh, you won't be able to use the dash dash db path option if you're read from Wired Tiger, and you can also do a the standard MongoDB rolling upgrade procedure for upgrading a replica set, which is basically uh, shut down uh, shut down a secondary, uh, delete its db path and bring it back up with the new storage engine. Then do the same thing for another secondary, step down the 
shut down the primary, bring it back up, and basically zero downtime on zero downtime upgrade. There are some uh, there's some other configuration options that you can use. For example, this is for setting uh, setting Zlib compression. Um, again, and MongoD dash dash help can give you uh, can give you your option. The Wired Tiger collection gives you uh, basically enable Zlib compression. A um, couple of configuration options that that work for MMAP v1 that, that don't work with Wired Tiger. Uh, probably the most uh, most important one is the directory per DB option. This uh, this option, if you specify it to an MMAP v1 MongoD, it will create a separate directory for each database. So if you have, I know, a database of users that contains a collection of like administrators and regular users, um, if you have directory per db on, there will be a separate directory for that, uh, just for that particular database. This is often useful for uh, if you want to have, uh, well, um, what do you call it? If you want to have a certain database be on a separate physical disk, uh, databases are a much higher level abstraction when you're using the Wired Tiger storage engine. So that uh, so it just doesn't support directory per DB at all. Uh, there are also a few other options that don't have Wired Tiger equivalents. Uh, no pre-alloc because Wired Tiger doesn't actually pre-allocate uh, data or large data files at all. Also, small files doesn't uh, no longer applies because again, no pre-allocation at all. Um, sync delay and journal commit interval, which are sort of specific to how the MMAP v1 journal works, are also just they don't work with Wired Tiger at all. Um, you can also uh, configure Wired Tiger with uh, with YAML files. Again, um, MongoDB 2.6 introduced a new uh, YAML configuration file format. That actually makes your uh, that makes your sort of configuration options a lot more readable than having to specify all of them at the command line. So the YAML configuration spec has a uh, has a storage.wiredtiger option that lets you tweak Wired Tiger options in sort of a more readable way. So right here again, this is the same thing as you saw or equivalent to what you saw here, where Basically, this says the collection config uh, block compressor is Zlib. That means that collect all collections will be compressed using uh, using the Zlib compression algorithm. Um, journaling. That's uh, that's another kind of important topic when it comes to Wired Tiger. Uh, again, Wired Tiger journals in a very different way than MMAP v1. The uh, the the sort of journal or write-ahead log that Wired Tiger uses is commit to the disk at certain checkpoints. Now you can tweak the options when it's committed, but by default you get a checkpoint every 60 seconds or every two gigabytes written. Um, these data file and the data files that are committed to disk are guaranteed to always be consistent. So if you're running with journaling off, you'll lose your data since last checkpoint if the server crashes in between uh, in between checkpoints. So you could lose up to uh, up to 59.999 seconds of data or well, up to 60 probably if you have clock skew and or up to uh, or up to 2 gigs. Um, again, no there's no journal commit interval. Uh, the if you have journaling enabled, writes are written to the journal as soon as they come in. Uh, but that's subject to some internal Wired Tiger batching that isn't uh, that isn't actually configurable. So, few a uh, couple of things that are sort of changed in 3.0 related to uh, related to the changes with the storage engine API and Wired Tiger. Um, a lot of people access system.indexes and system.namespaces directly. These are uh, these are sort of internal collections that are used to store well indexes and uh, and namespace information. So these were uh, these were specially these are special collections in MMAP v1, and there's no equivalent in Wired Tiger. So you would have to use explicit commands now to uh, to get indexes and get collection names. Now uh, each drivers now will, or all of the latest versions of the MongoDB drivers have helpers for these. And the shell also has helpers for this as well. So if you're so basically, don't do system.db.system.indexes.find anymore. That will not 
at work in Wired Tiger and work if you're using MMAP v1, but in different storage engines, you might get unexpected behavior. Also, one more important detail it's worth noting, uh, Wired Tiger does not support 32-bit platforms at all, no 32-bit windows or anything like that. Um, anyway, time for, so time for a fun demo of actually using MMS automation with Wired Tiger. So if you, if you haven't seen MMS automation yet, it's, uh, it's MongoDB's tool for uh, basically you log into a website and you can sort of manage your MongoDB deployment with, uh, with a nice simple point and click interface that lets you basically say, okay, start me up, uh, start me up a replica set on EC2, Here's my, uh, here are my EC2 API keys. MMS automation will spot provision machines in EC2 and also uh, and install all of the agents it needs and actually start up a cluster for you and handle things like upgrading and um, or handle upgrading versions and handle rolling upgrades to different storage engines. So do, 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 do. I'm not going to give it my, uh, my EC2 keys but I have an EC2 instance already running right here. It, this, is the, uh, this is the MMS automation UI. So I have this, uh, this, uh, EC, or the, or this MongoDB instance running in EC2. It's running version 2.8.0 RC2, which is actually, unfortunately, the latest version that, uh, that MMS automation supports. And as you can see, it's running storage engine MMAP v1. And I have an SSH window open to its and right uh, right here is where there is the where it's running a MongoD instance. So let me in order to upgrade to Wired Tiger, it's actually a little bit of a more complex task than uh, than you normally would see in MMS automation because of the restriction the DB path. Again, uh, MMS automation won't let you change the, uh, the DB path of your database, so you need to do a little extra manual work to, uh, to switch to uh, switch to Wired Tiger, and also you will have to delete the, uh, delete the DB path folder. So what we can do is shut this guy down, I think it shut it down. Okay, there it goes. So now you now it's shut down, and what we need to do is actually just get rid of the DB path. Because otherwise, MMS automation will get confused that uh, that the MongoD is refusing to start. Going to edit the configuration. Go into uh, go into advanced options, and there's this nice little engine option right here under storage. And that V1 switch to switch over to Wire Tiger. So apply that. Review and deploy. And wait for the server to start. Aha, there we go. So now take a look. Weird. Okay, so I guess it didn't restart. Okay, that's uh, that's a little bit weird. Oh, right, because I didn't start the server. Sorry about that. So yeah, in addition to switching uh, switching the storage engine, I actually needed to tell it to start.
devices, internet to the ice. Hello, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm there. I yeah, think that's we unfortunate. Are. Well, uh, can you all hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Can't see you. All right, cool. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like MMS is not cooperating with me today. Well, that's uh, that's how it works in theory. Let me just check one more time. Uh, hmm. Nope. Looks like it's not cooperating with me today. Sorry about that. But well, let's uh, let's well, let's skip that particular bit. This is why uh, this is why I usually don't do live coding. But anyway, so let's talk about some of the some basic performance numbers. Um, so one of one of the use cases that I've been wanting to see with MongoDB is uh, is using MongoDB for more analytics type workloads. So write heavy workloads are definitely not the uh, definitely not the forte of MMAP. Um, sort of, or well, insert-only workloads are kind of what analytics data is all about. You're typically, if you're going to be using MongoDB for analytics, you're typically just going to be inserting a bunch of data and occasionally reading it back. Um, with such cases, durability is uh, nice to have, and more important. And so that sounds uh, that sounds like it were, were a case where uh, Wired Tiger would be a much better fit. So the question is, how does uh, how does Wired Tiger without journaling do on sort of an insert only workload? Well, it's simple little n equals one experiment. Uh, the Mongo shell has a bench run function, which is a sort of very simple way of running some performance benchmarks. Um, you basically pass it an array of operations. That's ops right here. Uh, the number of threads you run in parallel and the number of seconds to run the benchmark for, and of course, output uh, output the totals. So what this particular uh, script is going to do is it's basically just going to have five threads uh, inserting the document x colon one into the namespace test.test .test as fast as they can for 10 seconds, and sort of output the uh, the number of documents that, uh, that it could insert per second. And Put numbers on experiment I ran on my on my Linux box. So, with uh, with MMAP v1, the numbers aren't particularly great, but with Wired Tiger and dash dash no journal, it looks like you get a, it looks like about four times as many inserts per second, which is pretty awesome. And again, compression is also uh, one of the important core features of Wired Tiger. After this benchmark. Uh, looked at slash data slash db sums up to about 23 megs. Whereas if you do the same thing with Wired Tiger with uh, or with MMAP v1 and with uh, with all of the flags that you use to basically prevent uh, prevent MMAP v1 from putting in extra data, uh, MMAP v1 still uses about 100 megs of uh, 100 megs of space. So it's not really a fair comparison. The data is very small. But I get, but it shows that uh, that Wired Tiger is definitely more efficient in terms of utilizing disk space as well as uh, as well as providing faster write throughput, at least in this very simple example. So that's uh, that's all I have. I will put these slides up on SlideShare, and I'll have this up on my Twitter when uh, when I'm done talking here. So. Thanks. Uh, thanks for listening. Sorry about the uh, the MMS snafu. I tried this early, I tried that earlier today, and it worked just fine. Perhaps I uh, perhaps I made a subtle mistake there somewhere. But uh, but yeah, slides uh, slides will be up. Thanks uh, thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for Bill. Uh, thanks to Bill for setting all this up. Thanks. Awesome. I switch over. I have a few questions for you, but um, yeah, questions. I I got three questions. <laughs> and first of all, I didn't even realize yep. that that stuff was the benchmarking stuff was really cool. Yeah, that's pretty neat. And now I'm super uh, anxious to get my hands on 3.0. Just even with the um, memory map version one changes at the collection level for the locking. So um, I'm really excited that the journaling piece in Wire Tiger is kind of gone and it went to the checkpoint. But I thought the journaling piece was a big reason why MongoDB was item potent. So was I just wrong there, and or is, is that still in place with WAR? So with uh, with MMAP v1, the journal is still there, and it is a big 
part of um, of guaranteeing consistency and I guess uh, and I guess I'd impotency. Um, but that's not necessarily it's not quite as important with Wired Tiger. Um, the reasoning for that again is because uh, is because uh, what do you call it? Uh, because MAP v1 likes updating thing likes updating documents in place. So if you have a uh, if you have a counter and you increment it, it will actually update that in place and then persist it to the disk later. Um, and basically, the point of the the point of the journal was to make sure that if the uh, if the server died halfway through this particular operation, uh, that you would have sort of sensible data. So right. that's uh, so. Again, it makes sense for uh, it makes sense for MAP v1. It's very important for MAP v1. With uh, with due to the internals of Wired Tiger, it's not as big of a deal there. It's more for sort of guaranteeing durability in Wired Tiger as opposed to as opposed to guaranteeing consistency. Um, just sort of how the uh, how the storage engine is implemented, and uh, I, I'm not exactly terribly familiar with the particulars of that. When is the 3.0 expected to be released? Like well, so stuff. the uh, the current date is February third, which is actually just next Monday, I believe, if math serves me correctly. Wow! And then I'm assuming on that release, MMS is going to have full support for this, or we're still going to have to wait if we're using MMS. Um. Oh, depends on uh, depends on how you what you mean by full support. I not exactly one hundred percent. Or depends on uh, depends on precisely what you mean. I actually am, I can't say much about or I don't really know what's going on on the MMS front. I um, I know that MMS automation will prob will should have support for uh, for upgrade to three very soon. I would imagine that that's a priority, but I don't know that for a fact. Um, again, the uh, the upgrades to Wired Tiger doing that automatically is a little bit tricky because of the uh, because of the fact that you have to have a clean DB path. Um, so, not entirely sure what the status is on that, but yeah, keep an eye out. I, I'm actually curious myself. Um, uh, my last question is. Oh no, I forgot what my last question was. You guys have a question while I try to remember what I wanted to ask them? No, no. Oh, yeah, okay, so the applications that I'm building are heavy-duty aggregation framework. Mm -hmm. um, so not so much heavy-duty um, insert. And I can't wait to benchmark um, these two storage engines anyway. But based on what you're seeing, if I'm doing more heavy aggregation framework-related stuff, I have to imagine the doc document-level locking is going to be Huge for me, or no? Because it will be shared reads anyway. So, what do you think would would be faster in that type of um, application environment? Honestly, I am not entirely sure. I that's not something that I have run. Um, some of the some of the benchmarks I've seen floating around sort uh, not not entirely sure if they're public, but they show pretty reasonably similar. Uh, Performance on sort of very read-heavy workloads and just read-only workloads between uh, between Wired Tiger and MMAP v1 at least in um, at least well, or at least in 3.0. Um, but you are you are right that the uh, that the document level locking is not that big of a deal when it comes to uh, when it comes to aggregations as long as you don't have inserts going on. Or a lot of inserts going on while you're doing uh, while you're doing an aggregation. Again, if you have like static data that nobody is really writing to, you probably won't see that much of a performance difference either way. Simply because, uh, well, the way that uh, the way that again the way that these locks work is that they're as uh, other reader writer locks. So uh, as many things can be reading at one time as they can, as long as nothing is writing. Well. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, I, this cool. was awesome. I, yeah. Now I'm super excited for this 3.0 release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to get my hands on. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of very cool things coming out, and I am. Um, oh, you're. Uh, I'm in the same boat as you. I can't wait to see 3.0 and start playing with it. And uh, yeah, I'll. I'm actually very much looking forward to just like using Wired Tiger for pretty much all my use cases. 
and also hoping to... One of the things I wanted to actually do with this talk was I was thinking I would actually do make it more based on sort of uh, chugging analytics data into Wired Tiger. Um, oh, another thing worth noting about uh, about Wired Tiger is uh, so the Wired Tiger storage engine itself, ha or the independent product, actually has support for log structured merge trees, which are sort of like a very um, a very right throughput uh, focused data structure. That's sort of the data structure that underlies Cassandra, which is the uh, which is another popular NoSQL database that basically specializes in having an extremely high write throughput at the cost of having uh, the cost of having slightly less good read throughput. Um, unfortunately, MongoDB does just does not support uh, or MongoDB won't support Wired Tiger's log structured merge trees at least in 3.0. I hope in the future it will. Um, but yeah, another thing worth noting is if you uh, if you've been looking into Wired Tiger and seen that it supports log structured merge trees, and we're like me, and we're very excited by this because you thought like, oh wow, now I can uh, now I can use MongoDB for everything. There's literally no use case where I would ever consider anything else. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, not quite yet. But uh, but hopefully that's uh, hopefully that's going to happen some point soonish. Yeah. yeah, I was hoping to actually focus more on like the um, using this for analytics workloads. But then, uh, well, there's a little bit of a dearth of information on Wired Tiger uh, or using MongoDB with Wired Tiger out there right now, and also there's uh, and also no support for log structured merge trees means it's not quite as good as I would have hoped. Yeah, but still pretty awesome. Wondering if this ends up at some point being the default storage engine instead of the memory map files. Yeah. So there have been uh, there have been some discussions about that, and it may very it may be the case at some point in the future. Um, again, can't comment on when or where, but I would imagine that it would be something that uh, that would well, uh, it'll have to sort of serve, uh, live up to field scrutiny because part of uh, part of the benefit of MMAP v1 is sort of people know MMAP v1, they know it's sort of performance characteristics, what it does well, what it doesn't do well, and sort of know how and our support people and people who are working with MongoDB out in production environments sort of have a good detailed understanding of how that storage engine works and why. Whereas Wired Tiger doesn't quite enjoy that same level of mind share just yet. So we'd have to get like our tooling up to that stage, have to get the uh, have to get the customer knowledge up to that stage. There's uh, there's a lot of things that would need to happen for that to even be a possibility. So not uh, get the cat say when or where, but I would, but it could be a possibility. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because well, the one thing that strikes me is well, you know the DevOps side now, backing up the checkpoints. Mm -hmm. Like you have to take a different approach, approach to yeah. that now. Not necessarily good or bad, better or worse, but something different. Right? You something you different. Know it as good as the other one. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, if you're running Wired Tiger with uh, with journaling on, you don't really have to worry about the uh, about the checkpoints. Um, you'll you'll still get the uh, you'll still get the guaranteed consistency that you're used to with uh, with journaling in the MMAP v1, even uh, even if the server crashes. It's just it's not quite as important for guaranteeing data consistency. Because again, with uh, with MMAP v1, if you're running with journaling off and you crash at an inopportune time, you could have uh, you could have some corrupted data. You could have a document that's in a in a bad state. Whereas with Wired Tiger, that's uh, the way, with the way that the storage engine works, just not really a possibility. So then, from an application side, the write levels without the journaling are no longer applied, right? When I say I want half my cluster. To have updated this before you come back and say. It's oh no! Uh, if you if again the right concerns are still the same as what you're used to. So if you uh, if you specify and uh, so if you specify J true, if you're uh, if you're writing Wired Tiger with journaling on, it will uh, it will yeah wait for it to be persistent to the Wired Tiger journal before uh, before giving you the uh, before giving you the result. If the journaling is off, then it just it just wants the master update at that point. So I actually don't know off the top of my head what the uh, what the behavior is with if you're doing J true with journaling off. Um, typically, if you uh, if you're concerned with if you're if you're sort of concerned enough about it that specify a J true write concern, 
you typically have uh, you typically have MongoDB running with journaling on, <laughs> especially, since you have to, especially since you have to explicitly disable journaling and explicitly specify JTrue. So I haven't really tried. Don't know off the top of my head. No, but you can go. This is were, sorry. Oh, uh, nothing in particular. I don't really have anything more to say. No, I just said this is the first time we're hearing this, so all these questions are. I'm sure um, the MongoDB masters have been talking about this for for months, and I haven't followed along properly. Uh, well, there have been a few things. There's been a lot of new announcements, and things have uh, things have sort of changed a fair bit over the last few months. For example, like. Um, Back in December, it wasn't even entirely clear whether or not log structured merge trees were going to be in or not. Um, but I think uh, I think it's been decided that they're not. It was mostly clear that they weren't, but I don't think it was sort of like a, an officially decided thing. Well, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to see what it can do and run some benchmarks on it. So, all right. Well, yeah. I, have, I have a question. Uh, which yeah. I don't know that much about Mongo compared to the other people here, but um, how about putting uh, video data into it? Um, would the Wire Tiger be better or worse than the MMAP backend? Or have you done it? I don't know. So actually, it depends on are are you putting video data into sort of like a grid FS sort of collection? Like, are you storing the actual binary video in the uh, in the database? Yeah, that's the or question. For streaming, for streaming uh, video out of it. I know it's probably not, I mean, we wouldn't use this kind of thing for, for that, but just, uh, you know. Actually, not really, uh, not really a use case that I'm at all familiar with. I couldn't really, uh, couldn't really say. I yeah. generally don't, I haven't really used GridFS for pretty much anything, for that matter. Typically, if, again, my experience with that has been, um, at some point I wrote something to stream music from, uh, from, Google, from the unofficial Google Music API. But there, I was just storing a URL to a stream as opposed to a, uh, as opposed to the actual music content itself. Okay. So how about, how about any binary data then? Is it is or is it just uh, documents that it's optimized for? Or so actually, I I honestly haven't uh, haven't delved into this at all to enough to make a judgment on that. Um, typically, my use for MongoDB is just storing uh, just storing documents. So I haven't really used it for storing binary data. Okay, so it's really like it's just XML text, just yeah, like JSON. regular text, like data. Yeah, yeah, yeah anything that's JSON. Yeah, uh, regular right. text like based right. on documents. Based on yeah, I guess you can have a field that's just pure binary, right? Yeah, I guess. If you wanted to do that. Big enough, but, you know, but then you should be looking at grid FS, yeah. I think, at that point. Okay. All right. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for your time. So much for your time. It. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you guys for thank you guys for coming out, and thanks for coming out after it got rescheduled, and thanks for scheduling this, Bill. No, I we're gonna have to have you back this yeah. year. That's fine. For sure, and um, please stay warm and, and keep the shovel near you. So when you open the door and shovel at the top, you can shovel out. Cool. Thanks. Much appreciated. So uh, have, have a good night, guys. All right. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye.